<laughs> what you don't see is there are one, two, three, five people and Corey, my videographer, is behind with a camera, literally waiting to hear what I have to say. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say this and I hope this translates well and if people don't get offended. There's a dark cloud that sort of looms over the city of St. Louis. The city of St. Louis has been on fire this weekend due to Darius Cooks. He travels from city to city doing dinner events in each location, and this previous weekend he was in St. Louis. He was infuriated and saddened by the food scene in our city. He gave some honest criticisms, and some people took them very personally. He has millions of followers, but I sent him a DM, and I didn't expect a response, but he got back to me and said he'd be honored to be on the show. This episode is one of the most highly anticipated pieces of content I've probably ever posted, mainly because this is the last stop before he heads out of St. Louis, I knew the perfect place to take him to, and that is Rated Test Kitchen, which is by Dewan Rice, who I had on the show a few weeks back. The entire premise of the concept is to bring out your inner food critic, and this is really the only place I had confidence in that Darius would actually enjoy the food. I told Darius that we could film the podcast at Rated and have not just an insightful conversation, but also talk about some of the issues with St. Louis over what I hoped would be good food. People that tuned into his live stream had nothing but positive comments, but was the food and experience enough to change Darius's opinion and views on St. Louis? Hit that subscribe button and let's get into the show. Welcome to the podcast. This is my degree and this isn't my degree. Welcome to the show where I give you a behind the scenes glimpse into the life of a full-time freelancer and content creator. And today I am joined by... It's me, Darius. But you know me as Darius Cooks on social media. So would you consider yourself... I guess a chef, a food critic. What would, how would you describe yourself in like one <laughs> sentence? <laughs> when people ask me, they say, what do you do, right? Yeah. So I have one line and I say, uh, I am an, uh, an entrepreneur in the food media space. Oh, I like that. Right, so yeah. that covers, you name it, everything. Whether yeah. that's recipe creation, cookbook author, mm -hmm. social media influencer, you name it, it mm -hmm. sort of encompasses all of that. But at the core of what I do, I'm just a food blogger mm -hmm. um, that monetizes pretty much on every level that I can. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do that as a creator. There so is. Like, yeah, there are. Yeah, there are. I know that you're active on like Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, you're everywhere. Yeah, I am. So social is important, uh, but I'm also pretty active on live stream. Live mm -hmm. streams are important. I figure out ways to sort of encompass that. And then having a product line uh, that you can also monetize. So direct mm -hmm. to consumer sales is also uh, huge yeah, within, within the business as well. So. So I guess what kind of started the the live stream? Is that like your preferred way of connecting with your audience? You know what? It's so interesting that you asked. I don't even think there was a moment that I said, let's just start doing live stream. It just yeah. sort of happened, right? So yeah. it started back, I don't know if you know this, but on Periscope. Really? Yeah, so Periscope okay. was, it's now gone. They've died. They've gone away. Unfortunately, rest right. in peace. Yeah, all right. But Periscope <laughs> was just a, a straight like live streaming platform, right? So mm -hmm. I would get on Periscope and I would just sit and talk like there's no agenda there's to just get on here and talk yeah and we didn't talk about content stuff it wasn't talking about food i wasn't talking about business just wasn't talking hey what's going on how's the day yeah and that grew from 10 people watching to a thousand people watching okay um and it just became one of the cruxes of the business and what I do and how I brand myself on social media. So it just started that way. And yeah. now here we are. So now the live stream, we do like just regular conversation. I'll live mm -hmm. stream the reviews. And then mm -hmm. I'll also do live streams uh, cooking as well, cooking and cocktails. So everything essentially started on Periscope and just kind of like grew from there? No, or I would say it probably started just as a food blogger. So if okay. you think about um, back in the day when I was doing like, when they had Blogger and Blogspot. Yeah, yeah. So it started back then and I've just been so adamant and new tools have come out to help us, you know, throughout the, the journey yeah. that, you know, because when I first started, you know, Facebook was barely there. There was mm -hmm. no Instagram, Twitter wasn't around. And then as these tools started coming on board, coming online, then we just grab a hold of those. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then figure out a way to incorporate that into what we've got going on. Okay. Yep. Well, I've got so many questions about what you do, Ask, your social strategy. Right yeah. But I do want to let you guys know that we are at Rated Test Kitchen today. We are. So I know that you're interested in like the young up and coming chefs. Yes. And this is run by Chef Juan Rice, who is 22 years old. So I hear. So I am excited for you to go through this experience. How it's going to work is they're going to bring several courses out. We're going to enjoy and just keep the conversation going. I'm here for it. Let's so, do it. Yeah, I am excited for this. So I guess um, you got started through just like going live, doing blogs. 
So I guess, can you share the story of how Dining with Darius developed from that? Yeah, so uh, I was on Facebook one day. I was sitting at my corporate job and mm. I wrote a, um, a post. This is back when the algorithms were favorable, right? Yeah. So yep. I wrote a post. It's, everything was chronological. Like, yes. So now you don't know if a person wrote a post a day ago or 10 years ago when you log on to Facebook. So um, I got on to Facebook and I said, hey, if I do a dinner party, would you come? That was the question. And people were like, yeah, of course I would come. And I had, you know, not even half the following I have now. So I'm like, okay, I guess. So um, I like, I don't know where I'll do. I'll do it at my house, like yeah. in my apartment, right? How yeah. bad could this be? That was on March uh, 7, 2015, right? Okay. So I sold 25 tickets in like five minutes. And I was like, whoa, what just happened, right? So that was literally 2,500 bucks in five minutes. So then people were like, oh, I was in a meeting. I didn't get a chance to see it. Can you, you got to do another one. I'm like, another mm, one? What are you talking about? A sequel. Right. <laughs> so the first one was March 7th. So then another one, March 21st. Skip the 14th. Then we did a, they came back and said, we need more. So I did March 28th. And so in about two hours and seven minutes, I had made 7,500 bucks, right? That's the time it took to sell all those tickets. And I said, God, dog, I paid 7,500 bucks in two hours and seven minutes. I started carrying the one, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And then I was like, well, hold on one second. If I do this or do this, I only need this to live. You know, what does this look like? So mm -hmm. I said, okay, let's test out other cities. So I was, and I still had a full-time job. So I said, okay, I'll do Orlando, right? If Orlando okay. sells out, I'll go. So I did Orlando, Orlando sold out. I went to Orlando, right? Yeah. So then I'm like, well, I guess I got to quit my job now. Oh, I bet that was like a freeing moment. It wasn't. I had a very oh, no. good job. Okay. $150,000 a year oh. I was making. I had five figure bonuses. I had a corner office. I had a staff. It was beautiful, right? Yeah. It, it was, it's what people want in corporate. Mm -hmm. But what I looked at was the time difference, right? So to do dining with Darius Cooks at this time, I would fly out on Friday, come back on Monday. So I'm only working Saturday and Sunday. Yep. I've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday off. Right. I don't have to work. So I started thinking about that. And that's how it grew. It grew from, you know, just Friday and Saturday or Saturday and Sunday to more days, more days as the event grew in popularity. So it grew so fast that last year we did 176 dinner parties. This year, uh, 334. 334. Yes. Oh, my gosh. That's almost enough to like fill out an entire year. Yes. And people and it's still not enough. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that's what I'm going through. So I guess where are you headed to next? Uh, Boston, and then uh, I don't know. After that, I can't <laughs> remember. I think it's um, I want to say Indianapolis. I don't know, man. I can't remember. It's okay. It's, it's on I the mean, calendar. It's on the yeah. calendar. I can tell you, we just came from Newark. We mm -hmm. flew straight from Newark to St. Louis. We we we're here until tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We go back to Atlanta for a couple of days, and then Thursday we fly to Boston. Okay, nice. I bet that's a lot of like interesting experiences like you've been to st louis now eight times yeah at least okay so i guess whenever you have this off time like how do you decide what restaurants to go to like do you ask your audience i do do you look at I reviews do. from no, other people like no so what's interesting is i don't i don't look at any reviews okay because uh, i don't want like to be say unbiased yeah i don't want to yeah. be i don't want to be jaded like walking in the door knowing what to expect like you mm -hmm. hear stuff from people but yeah. i don't like to formally read the reviews so mm -hmm. uh when i get to a city i'm at the airport the moment we touch down mm -hmm. i'll check in at the airport on facebook and say hey i'm here where should i go yeah. like what black owned restaurant should i go to and then people will tell me go here go here go here and it's mm -hmm. like a whole list in the comments and the engagement is crazy because yeah. you've got people who are like why would you send him there? And I went there. I didn't have a good time. Oh, you yep. should go here. Oh, this isn't black owned or this is closed. So mm -hmm. it even opens up a bigger conversation about just availability in certain mm -hmm. cities, which I think is an interesting conversation. Yeah, I think it is interesting, like looking at it from that perspective and like understanding what the scene is really like. Yeah. And also just like how different opinions can be like and different experiences can be as well. Yeah. You know, the other thing, too, is that like uh, there's a place here called Bait, I guess, and it mm -hmm. used to be open, but it's closed. And the number of people who didn't even know that Bait was closed, I think is crazy, right? Because people mm -hmm. were like, oh, Bait's amazing. We go there all the time. And people are like, no, it's closed. You didn't yeah. know that? And that, so it just goes to show you like what's going on in the scene of a city, right? That fact that you have popular restaurants that are here that may have gone away or shuttered because of the pandemic or whatever. Mm -hmm. And the general public is like, oh, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Didn't even know. So it just shows you how fast word travels or how slow it travels from yeah. person to person. So I guess whenever you pull up to 
a restaurant that is open, ready to go, and you're just like, I'm here for it. What kind of characteristics do you judge a restaurant <laughs> on? Is it like the food, the ambiance? Like, kind of walk me through your thought yeah. process because I'm super curious to like understand how are that you? works. Are yeah. You? Um. So it depends, right? I I I know based on the ambiance what I'm getting myself into, yeah. right? So there are some places that are might be what we call hole in the wall places, mm -hmm. right? I know I'm not getting ready to get the best customer service. I may not get the best in terms of, you know, sort of a culinary range mm -hmm. of items to choose from. So I sort of know what I'm getting myself into. Yeah. But then you go to places that might be a little bit more upscale, the decor, they spend some money and investment in the, in the space you sort of know you're gonna, how to judge that place and what you'll get. So mm -hmm. I look around when I first walk in and sort of know what I'm getting, but that doesn't always mean that's the right formula, mm -hmm. right? So for example, uh, there's a place in DC called Kitchen and Cocktails, mm -hmm. beautiful place. The man, Kevin Kelly spent a fortune making the space look amazing, right? Yeah. Food is BS, right? Oh. So the place looks great, but the food is not. So it's like sometimes, you, you hope for the best, but then you mm -hmm. don't get it. You know what I mean? Or you go to a, a place that's been around for a long time, like Georgia Browns in DC. Uh, everybody knows about Georgia Browns. It's mm -hmm. a super popular place in DC. Food is mediocre at best, mm -hmm. right? And not just, I'm not just saying that from critiquing the place, but the locals are saying that because they patronize mm -hmm. the place and they say, you know, it used to be good 20 years ago. So it's not a fast and hard formula, but it sort of gets you halfway there mm -hmm. that when you walk in take a look around and just sort of know what you're getting yourself into. Are there any like unique things that like whenever you walk into a place you like spot maybe a certain thing or a certain like element that you're like, okay, I know that there's a lot of potential here and this could be amazing. Yeah. So I think some of the call outs that I might see uh, happen to be with the decor. Okay. Um, so you look around and you go, does this look like a black owned restaurant? Mm -hmm. Right. And so people go, well, what does that mean, Darius? Like, what's a black owned restaurant? What are you saying? That could be yeah. offensive. And so what I mean is that there's some places where some owners are super intentional mm -hmm. about ensuring that there are pieces of the African American culture mm -hmm. woven throughout the entire experience. So you'll look on the wall and you'll see, you know, beautiful images of Dizzy Gillespie or Minnie Ripperton or, mm -hmm. you know, some famous chef, B. Smith, who passed away from Alzheimer's or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, or or there's a guy out of Richmond. His name is uh, Mike Lindsay. He owns the Lindsay Group. He's got like six or seven restaurants in Richmond, maybe okay. more. Um, he is intentional, intentional about mm -hmm. making sure that when you walk in, nothing looks or speaks to it being black owned, mm -hmm. right? So it's it's interesting when you see those sort of nuances. So I pick that up just because mm -hmm. I'm looking around. Um, and then there are some places you go, like uh, there's a place called, uh, I think it's called Kokomo. Oh, no, Kanoko. Okay. Kanoko, which is a, a a space, a place in um in Jamaica, but it's a Jamaican restaurant that's out of um in the out of Baltimore, like at the Baltimore, like White Marsh mm -hmm. in that area, and everything in there is themed about airplanes, like taking a trip. Oh, that's cool. So all of the servers they're wearing flight attendant uniforms. Yeah. Right. When you walk in, you know, welcome to your journey. You're about to take flight. You know, mm -hmm. when you leave, thanks for flying with us, right? Mm -hmm. So it's those little things that you pick out when you go, oh, this is nice. Mm -hmm. This is cute. Yeah. This is interesting, right? It's not just a plate of macaroni and cheese and fried chicken, but it, they yeah. sort of incorporate this experience that makes you go, now this is, now this is, now this is nice. Yeah. Okay, now y'all done really did something yeah. like that. You so can, those like, are some of the things. Attention. Yeah, so those are some of the things I look for. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, I... That's so fascinating, like, that there's a place out there that's all about airplanes. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, it's, it's about the journey. Even when they yeah. come up to you, you know, they'll tell you, you know, put on your seatbelt. We're going to fly at this altitude. Oh, wow. So like, they take a, it to, like, They take it to the, the entire level. level. Yeah, and they tell you you're going to this place in Jamaica where there's the river and then da 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 da, da. It's a whole thing. And oh, I wow. was literally blown away because I was like, wow. The, yeah. Who else is doing this? Are there any other themed like places like that that you've been to? Very few. I, I think that's why I like the only one. I went to a place um, in Newark, New Jersey called Swahili Village okay. uh, last week. That was beautiful. It wasn't on the same level in terms of experience as uh, Konoko, but yeah. it still was, you know, foreign. It was a uh, Kenyan mm -hmm. African food. So and it was outstanding. Like it was completely outstanding. So those are two of the ones I can probably call out. Most places I go, unfortunately, there's no thrill. It's mm -hmm. just like, here's a plate, here's a food, go for it. So you, you, I guess 
it'd be good advice to like make sure that you're intentional about every part of the experience from the moment you walk in. I mean, shouldn't that be customary though? Yeah. I mean, think about it. Whether I'm doing a mom and pop storefront restaurant mm -hmm. or I'm doing a 300 seater, you know, black owned experience, mm -hmm. shouldn't it be thought process woven mm -hmm. throughout e each place, right? Each space, each touch point that a customer has. And unfortunately some restaurants don't have it. Do you think that's like one of the more common like aspects that's overlooked in the dining experience is like the general ambiance. I do, I do, but I'll tell you why though. It's 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 not to fault the owners 100%, right? Mm -hmm. Because when you talk about black owned restaurants, this is a population of black owned restaurants that are underfunded, mm -hmm. uh, they're understaffed, they're under-resourced, right? Mm -hmm. So you're expecting or doing a comparative analysis between an African-American owned restaurant that's struggling to survive mm -hmm. versus a white owned restaurant that is thriving, mm -hmm. right? There's a, there's a dichotomy that exists. And unfortunately, you've got to look at all the aspects to make a proper mm -hmm. judgment. So mm -hmm. I do believe that if there were more resources, not just resources, Dante, mm -hmm. but also the mentality of such, right? Mm -hmm. There are people who say, I just know how to cook well, so I'm gonna open up a restaurant. Right. Yeah. You're not thinking anything about finances. You're not thinking anything about mm -hmm. accounting. You're not thinking anything about user experience. You're not thinking mm -hmm. anything about any of these things that make the experience thrive other than yeah. cooking good food, putting it on a plate. Yeah. Like even from like a content creator perspective, like I know a lot of just creatives in general, a lot of us get like locked into that one aspect that we're like, this is our favorite thing to do. This is what we want to do. And we kind of overlook the rest of the journey. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, and, and, but Overlook is an interesting word because, you know, there's a quadrant that you don't know what you don't know, right? So I, I run into restaurant owners that don't know what they don't know. I, you know, there's a place, Geneva's uh, Cornbread. She's a famous cornbread and chicken place out in, um, not Orlando, Jacksonville, I think. I can't remember. Where Somewhere in Florida. Somewhere <laughs> in Florida. I think it's outside of Orlando that I'm thinking about it. Okay. Or it might not even be there. Maybe it's Savannah. Savannah, Georgia. Oh, so not Savannah. Florida. Yeah, Savannah, Georgia. So beautiful place, right? Food's great. She's amazing. But she's an older woman, right? She's got to be, I'm, I'm not, I don't know. I'm guessing her age. She's got to be in her 60s, right? Okay. Well, you know, is she really thinking about, you know, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion? Is she thinking about, you know, a full-on user experience from the time you walk through the front door? Is mm -hmm. she thinking about, you know, diction and tone of servers as they're speaking to, like, Mm -hmm. Or is she saying, make sure you put enough black pepper in the gravy? You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like you got to know what to expect from from place to place. I wish more black owned restaurants had access to those resources and understood how that played a role. But we've got a long conversation ahead of us to get there. While we talk about the next topic, yeah. it appears that the first course is ready. I'm ready. So I am excited to see what uh -oh. everyone has prepared. Oh, here we go. Can I just eat it or do I have to critique it? <laughs> All right, so look, we know you said no shrimp and grits, right? Yeah, well, I didn't say none. I just said just a more inspired shrimp and grits. This is so right. interesting. Oh, wow. Well, I hope you're not asking for my feedback. <laughs> so I don't know if you know the concept of our restaurant or not. I kind of think I do, but okay. but definitely explain. Yeah, so it's called rated test, rated test kitchen. We partner with local farmers, and we didn't want to put a demand on the farmers, so we just use whatever they have in season, and we base a menu based off of that. Got it. So it constantly rotates, but the concept behind it is that you get to rate the food as if you're a food critic. Okay. So typically during our regular dinner service, it's seven courses. Yeah. So they get to rate each course based off of you know what they like, all that type of stuff, the pairings that come with it. Um, and for today, it's just going to be four courses because it's like our brunch segue. Perfect. Um, and we only been over for two weeks. So people are still kind of getting used to the concept. Yeah. Something new. Yeah. That the owner's inviting for critique. Yeah. Um, but we think it'd be, we think it'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. It's needed, man. Yeah. That yeah, concept yeah. is needed. Yeah. So, so let's hope everything matches so. the, the so. necessity <laughs> around here. Okay. <laughs> so this in front of you is uh, shrimp grits. The sauce is a West African pepper sauce. Um, I was traveling in South Carolina for a while doing Charleston, doing restaurant consulting and stuff. Um, and I worked with a chef and he kind of gave me the gola like infusion. And so I really like put, pick that up, fuse it with some of the things that we do here in St. Louis. And then this is the dish that I created. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love that. I hope we do too. Let's talk. Let's, <laughs> let's roll it. Let's go. So, all right. Walk me through your process. Whenever the plate hits the table, yeah. where is your mind going? So the what are you looking at? I pick the menu up, right? It's the yeah. first thing I do because I'm I'm doing this. This is so nerve wracking. What, <laughs> what, what you don't see is there are one, two, three, five people and Corey, my videographer, is behind 
with a camera literally waiting to hear what I have to say. <laughs> um, so the first thing I do is I pick up the menu to just to draw a parallel mm -hmm. between what's in front of me and what's on the menu, because this menu is what people are going to be expecting. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, does does the plate in front of me match what we're picking up from the menu? Mm -hmm. Right. So that's first and foremost. There's a story behind it which I think is interesting. Mm -hmm. I wish there was something that spoke to that on the menu so we mm -hmm. can kind of draw a parallel, but the fact that he explained it is fine. And then we taste it. Mm -hmm. So you ready? I'm ready. Let's do Let's it. sample. Let's do this. All right. So here's what I do first. Okay. I'm going to go for the grits, right? Go for the grits. And so okay. I always talk about technical things with the grits, right? Yes. So I would prefer grits to be a little bit more creamy mm -hmm. and I'm just going off of texture. Mm -hmm. They could have been sitting, Right, so maybe they were creamy at first, but they are a little on the stiff side, mm -hmm. but we'll taste it and see. Okay, okay. so cheers go. to that. Cheers to that. All right, then I will taste the grits along with the sauce. Okay, okay. All right, and then I'll try one of these shrimp. And then we can talk, this, talk about it okay. and talk it through. I about to say, I gotta, I gotta follow your lead. Follow my lead. <laughs> Here it goes. So initial thoughts. All right, initial thoughts is that I like the dish. If I had to give it a rating, I would give it a four out of five. And then let me tell you why. Even though the grits are not technically creamy, there's something in the grit that's different and unique. There's a spice that's there mm -hmm. that you don't pick up any place else. I don't know what it is in the background, but no, I can guarantee you his grandmother did not make grits with whatever is in these grits, all right? Mm -hmm. There's some spice hitting in the background. I can't pick it out. If I play around with it a little bit more, I'll probably figure it out, but there's some spice. And then this pepper sauce on top is beautiful because there's acid in it. It's also creamy. Mm -hmm. And here's what I like, what he did. The shrimp are seasoned. Mm -hmm. It's not just shrimp that are sauteed and put on top to pick up the flavor of everything else. Each individual component is seasoned. The only thing I would change about this dish is I got to figure out, we got to figure out a better garnish to go on top, right? With a plate that talks about, and this is simple, and right? It's grits, sauce, and shrimp, but it's done beautifully, so it's mm -hmm. elevated. What I would love to see is something else done with the, instead of microgreens on top, right? Mm -hmm. He talked about Charleston. Um, you know, he talked about Geechee Gullah culture. There's tons of things you could add. He talked about African influence. We could do some pickled okra. We could do some fried okra on top, you know, little fried okra shoestrings. There's so many other things that we could do to garnish this and make this beautiful, but still run parallel to the idea of what this dish is supposed to represent. I like how you went from like a big picture mm -hmm. down to the details. Yeah. Like here's each different yeah. section yeah. of this. Yeah, that's kind of like what a, I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm fat, man. I'm fat and I'm a foodie. <laughs> so it's kind of, I've been doing this in my mind forever, mm -hmm. but now I, I get a chance to do it. This is probably, no, this, I mean, being in St. Louis, this is the best plate of shrimp ingredients I've had in St. Mm -hmm. Louis, right? And if you're going to do a dish that represents, because I think every local restaurants should have something that speaks to the local culture, mm -hmm. right? If you're going to do shrimp and grits, which is on everybody's menu, mm -hmm. this is the difference between good and great. Mm -hmm. I guess because you mentioned shrimp and grits on your social media, how you were like, I want no more. I'm done with that. Well, not that I'm done with it, but it's on everybody's menu. Yes. And and is there a way to reimagine the idea of shrimp and grits? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you go to places in St. Louis. I went to um, Elicious. It was grits, barely seasoned. Butter on top, cheese, and like five shrimp and scallion, and that was it, right? Mm -hmm. Does that what does that speak to? What 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 inspiration are you drawing from to present that and go, wow, this is amazing? Mm -hmm. Whereas here you have something a little bit a little bit better. So is this more in line with what you were looking for? Oh, absolutely, yeah. The plating is beautiful. the The whole idea, even what it's served on. I mean, I've been I've been eating off of styrofoam containers, you know, oh. most of the time being here, right? Yeah. Using plastic forks, which again. Knowing what I'm getting, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. So th here's the first step. And I mean, this is what I'm talking about. You draw it chapter one. You know, you're mm -hmm. telling a story. You're drawing it in. It's an experience, right? Mm -hmm. With everything we've got to choose from, from ingredient to farm to grocery store. What are we even playing food for? Mm -hmm. Right? That's my personal idea. I say we cheers to that. Yes. Let's take know, a sample. I don't know what's in this. Yes. What was this? What, what, what are we having? What are, yeah. What are we having? There's no no liquor in here. No, we do this. 
Not yet. Not yet. It's coming. <laughs> this is delicious. Okay, this so this is the food St. Louis needs. Okay. This is what St. Louis. I'm, I'm yeah. telling you, like, what I've, I've been asking, where's the clean food? Where's mm -hmm. the, you know, the stuff that's that's reimagined and different and lovely? This is it. This is okay. It. So I guess whenever you're critiquing and kind of giving feedback on food versus drink, kind of walk me through drink. Same as well. thing. Same thing. So I'll do the same thing. Look at the menu. See what mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Taste it. Go. Is it balanced? Is mm -hmm. it too sweet? Are there any things that you think the majority of restaurants should have on their drink menu? Oh, if you're going to say anything Southern, sweet tea, lemonade, oh, homemade. you have to. You These have play, to. The, there's no homemade sweet tea here in St. Louis. Uh, the soul food restaurants. I went to, so she said, we have brisk. How did we let that happen? I don't know. There's no sweet tea. I went to Red's Barbecue, mm -hmm. right? Super popular place. Been around for a little bit. Yeah. At Red's Barbecue, we drank a brisk iced tea. Where in America do you go to a smokehouse mm -hmm. and there's no fresh sweet tea? Brisk. Um, mm. That's what, and then what we drank? We drank sweet, we drank brisk. So it's cool. <laughs> That's what we drank, man. <laughs> we got to do better than yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. We can do better than that. Hopefully. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is good though. I like this. Okay. I like it a lot, actually. I about to say, we could take a few more bites. Well, I had gastric bypass surgery. So my bites are like. Oh, so you're just like. Yeah, I nibble. Mm -hmm. What I don't, what I don't eat, <laughs> I give it to him. <laughs> and what he doesn't want, either we'll leave it there, throw it away, or um, take it back to the team for them to try. Because we mm -hmm. have a team of people, chefs at the house cooking for dinner parties. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah this shrimp is amazing. And it's not overcooked either. Kind of walk me through the chefs back at the house. Like, kind of walk me through the process of, like, going and getting the supplies from each city. Like, how is that experience? You don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I know that, like, there's a lot of opportunities for things to go crazy with oh, all that, that process. Yeah, that goes, yeah, Especially, it, like, since each city layout is different. And it goes crazy yeah. every week. Yeah. So, I have uh, four chefs that travel with me. Right. Okay. Two chefs are for my three o'clock seating and two chefs are for my seven o'clock seating. We switch them out every quarter. So if you work three o'clock first quarter, you're gonna work seven o'clock um second quarter. Okay. Three o'clock chefs, we only have dinner parties for three o'clock on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. Whereas seven o'clock could be any day of the week. So my three o'clock chefs, they will fly in on Thursday and then fly back out on Monday. Okay. Whereas seven o'clock chefs and him. They fly with me. Mm -hmm. So if we have to, if we have nine seatings in the city and we got to be there on a Tuesday, mm -hmm. then the four of us are together. Uh, by the time we touch down um, with all of our luggage, we've already ordered tables, chairs, everything's delivered to the house. Mm -hmm. uh, the chefs hit the ground running, right? So they'll start doing their grocery shopping. They'll do their Walmart run, their Costco, their Sam's Club, the liquor store, everything they need. Mm -hmm. They have a master list I provided for them so they know what they need to do their jobs. They bring everything back to the house. They'll start putting things up, portioning things off, and basically start working down their to-do list for the dinner party. The more they get done, the easier service is going to be, obviously. And then I'll just do a check with them uh, periodically. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'll do a check with them periodically just to make sure everybody's good. Do you need anything? We have any issues, any problems? They'll tell me, you know, we need this. The stove doesn't work. This isn't, you know, how do we solution this? Mm -hmm. And I've also empowered them to make a lot of their own decisions, right? So we have this whole scale where if it's a seven or below, solve it. You don't need mm -hmm. me for that, right? If it's a seven or above, engage, I will drop everything I'm doing immediately to help you. Right. So they yeah. know that. So they'll tell me, ah, oh, we had a problem, but we solved it. Wasn't seven or above. And then we sort of go from there. But I've been working with um, the same number of chefs. Uh, well, one guy's been with me now over a year. So this is his second year with me, Ramon. Uh, Tammy, uh, she runs my warehouse. She's also on tour with us as well. So she's been with me for like a couple of years, like four years. The other two came on this year. One is actually from St. Louis, believe it or not. Really? Yeah, my chef Darren is from St. He says the hairs and the thurs and all yep. that. Yeah, he's from St. Louis. <laughs> and uh, my other chef, Kareen, is out of Atlanta. So how did you meet all these people? Through Tammy, actually, believe okay. it or not. So Tammy's super connected in the... So it, it, here's the thing. Most cities have like a food scene, right? Yeah. Or they have like a chefy scene, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Tammy is a part of this underground chef community where she knows she teaches at the culinary school. She's yeah. a serve safe proctor. So she knows tons and tons of people. 
Yeah. I had a gig. Uh, I was baking uh, pound cakes. I had a pound cake company. I'm bringing it back. So if you're watching, it's coming back. I just got to get through a tour first. And she was baking for me. I doubled down on direct-to-consumer sales in my warehouse, like a warehouse situation. And so I needed somebody to run the warehouse. Oh, for our me. next course is here. Okay. Okay. Okay, now. Look at Wait this. a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. All right. Can we get a close up of that? Wait a minute, chef. Okay. <laughs> okay hold on. Okay. So back to everything being local. Our playware is completely made from a guy here in St. Louis. So love that. Customized. We love them designing all of that type of stuff. Yep. Um, the French toast is the bread is from a local bakery, so we get that sourced locally. Um, all of our garnishments tonight, so like the mints, the herbs, all of that type of stuff, is mm -hmm. from a local farmer named Leah. Um, so this is a big cut French toast. We soak it in a custard. Uh, we dust it with maple sugar, so that's just maple. Um, that we get from Canada that we cook down, turns into a sugar. Um, and then we pack whipped mascarpone with a little bit of lemon, um, slightly sweetened, oat crumble, and then some fresh fresh fruit and get on top. Did you go to culinary school? I did not. Okay. I did not. This is outstanding for not having gone to culinary <laughs> school. This I is outstanding. That. Wow. Let me show the people on Instagram, I mean on Facebook. <laughs> Do y'all see this? This is outstanding, right? And little touches. Look at this woven sort of pattern that really speaks to some sort of like ancient African garb, right? Mm -hmm. And look how it's woven on the plate and yeah. presents it. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Who's doing that besides him? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. All right, we're gonna taste this and then yeah, I'll let's, finish about it. Yeah, let's taste it. All right, now, so I don't walk like me French through. toast because French toast has eggs in it, but I'm taking the bait with a little corner. So we go for the corner? Yeah, I'm gonna okay. go for a corner. Normally, Corey eats my French toast and my macaroni and cheese with eggs in it. And then he gives us a rating, but I'm gonna try this. And then okay. he says mascarpone. That has me excited. It's one of my favorite ingredients in the world. Okay, so you, you gotta gotta layer it all over. I saw you do that technique there. Yeah, because you okay. get the full bite. It's gorgeous. Mmm. It's gorgeous. Hand me that, um, hand me that fork, Corey. That's immaculate. It is, yeah. He loves French stuff. <laughs> this is what we do. If it's good, I'm like, taste it. You were like, yeah, I like it. I don't like it. Okay, so yeah, let's let's walk through this. Okay. Talk me through the presentation. Talk me through the initial flavors. What it, are your it, all, it all works. I don't have any issue with this whatsoever. The bread is fluffy, which I which I could appreciate. Um, some French toast can be super heavy. Mm -hmm. So this is like a sort of a light. And if you look inside, the bread is sort of bouncy still. Yeah. Beautiful, lovely. I love that he piped whipped mascarpone on top, mm -hmm. right? So it's saying, what else can I do to elevate these flavors, right? Yeah. There's a, there's a beautiful crumble across, and he's done a fantastic job using figs, blackberries, and mint to garnish, and gooseberries to garnish. This is, I mean, this is the, the craft food that St. Louis needs on a larger mm -hmm. scale. There should be eight restaurants serving food like this that are black owned in St. Louis. And the fact that he's doing this is outstanding. I can't wait to see how your opinion progresses as these courses keep coming okay. out. Okay, I can't okay. wait, yeah, cause like, I don't know what they have planned. I haven't seen the menu. Like, well, I haven't even seen that. I, you haven't seen it. And I kind of want to just go into it blind. Okay, I wanna, well, like, then have I'm going to turn it over. I'm, gonna, you know? I'm not going to look at like, it. Like if you want to get some sneak peeks, you know, like look at the answers, that's no, fine. No, I won't, I won't. But I won't, yeah. I won't look at it. So I guess uh, speaking of Facebook Live and Instagram Live, I guess, do you prefer Facebook or Instagram to go live on? It depends. From like a technical standpoint. I know the audiences are the same and probably a little bit different. Maybe, but yeah. What do you prefer? <clears throat> I think it depends on what I'm streaming about. Okay. So like, what's the differentiation between the two? So on Instagram, can you, can we cuss on this? Absolutely. Okay. Like I'll start, I'll say, what the fuck? There okay. we go. I broke the ice. Cool. Good, good, so. good. So on Instagram, we just shoot the shit. That's it. Mm -hmm. We sit around, we hang out, we have a good time. We're not talking about content. We're not talking about food. We're just having a good time. Right. We yeah, talk like about talk about any everything yeah on on facebook it's a little bit more pointed right that's why i have mm -hmm. any of my evergreen conversations things mm -hmm. i want to stick around for a long time yeah i'll do them on um facebook so if there's conversations about the drama that happened right i'm no stranger to controversy so if i've got to clear my name for something mm -hmm. then it's having those conversations on facebook um a lot of the cooking live that i do yeah is on well i stream it on facebook tiktok 
Instagram and YouTube at the same time. Okay, so but you like that's hit the, every platform. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But that stuff pretty much lives uh, and breathes on uh, Facebook. So it just depends on like what I'm doing, what kind of content I'm delivering. Yeah. That's what I'll put out. Okay. You mentioned St. Louis. Yeah. And what's been going on here. Well, so I kind of want to get into that. So sure, I guess sure. you visited for eight years in a row. What kept you coming back? The people. I have tons of supporters in St. Louis. This is not my first time. Every year I come, my dinner parties have been sold out. We went from doing two dinner parties on the weekend to doing four dinner parties, and now we're up to seven oh, wow. You know, on my visit yeah. to St. Louis. So there's definitely a demand, and we're here. And I don't even think seven is enough. I think people are still asking for uh, more. Uh-oh, my bad. People are still asking for more and more tickets. Yeah. So I got some trolls on... Um, Oh, are the comments coming through? Yeah, um, you know, those people that come and be like, follow so-and-so, so-and-so. Oh, those yeah. like Those like bots. Yep. Yeah. That so are like, follow this page. Yeah, yeah. And they use like the yeah. pointing and triangle yeah, emoji. Yeah, yeah, like exactly. That's see. what I saw. Yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, Keep that out of the comment section. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what keeps me coming back, you know, is the, the support and the followers that, that want to come to the, the actual dinner parties themselves. Okay. So... I like to call St. Louis like a little big city because it has that like small town feel like a lot of people know each other here. It feels like a little town, but it still has like big city size and population. Sure. But compared to other major cities like Chicago, wow. Atlanta, wow. L.A., New York, like those places, how do you feel it stacks up against those? Doesn't. It doesn't? Doesn't. Yeah. Why that is, is a, that? You know what? I'm going to say this and I hope this translates well and if people don't get offended, there's a dark cloud that sort of looms over the city of St. Louis. I don't know if it was from Ferguson. I don't know if it's with Sweetie Pies, mm -hmm. right? But there is sort of this cloud mm -hmm. that's here and the cloud doesn't have to be here. Mm -hmm. The cloud can be broken through and you have people who are here who see the possibility mm -hmm. and do something about it, right? Mm -hmm. So I think if I had to sum it up, I think that's how I would put it. I, I feel like, you know, there's a cloud. You got people like this chef who's saying, no, we can rise ab above this. Here's mm -hmm. a little bit of sunshine mm -hmm. to peek out through that cloud. So that's how I think it stacks up. Um, I I mean, all of the, the good places that you would come to down here. I mean, I remember being so invigorated when I saw Sweetie Pies. I remember... Yeah. Sing Sweetie Pies, I was like, I had to get, and they, they weren't even at Upper Crust yet. I think they were still in like Mangrove or something like that, mm -hmm. or West Florissant or something. It was still small. <clears throat> and I was like, I gotta come. I can't, mm -hmm. I, I gotta go. I hopped the train six hours from Chicago, you know, this little young kid who likes food to come and eat at Sweetie Pies because that's all we saw on TV, right? Yeah. Which was great for people like me. Mm -hmm. But now that that's over and done, what's there for people who are coming up behind me? You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, when I say, I mean, if you ask me how it stacks up, I mean, it's, it's tough. There's not a lot to, to offer. Do you think there's anything specific that we can learn from larger cities? Or like anything that you think would be beneficial to the scene here? Um, I mean, there's lots to learn. I don't necessarily, I, I can't really answer that because I don't know enough, right? I've only been here for a couple of days. I visit yeah. once a year. So I, I don't really have enough data to be able to answer a question like that. Um, but... What I can tell you is from the culinary scene of what I've experienced, it needs a little bit of help. And not just, and what I mean when I say help is you've got what was just put in front of me. Mm -hmm. You can't get that anywhere else in St. Louis owned by a black person. Can't. You see what I'm saying? That, that, that means a lot. You know, you yeah. go to Elicious and use the term mascarpone cream. Right? Yeah. What, what is that? All right? So it's like, we need more stuff like this in order to stack up against other big cities. Mm -hmm. And I, the reason I ask is because I, there's, I feel like there's a certain level of criticism that mm -hmm. St. Louis needs. I mm -hmm. mean, I've born and raised here and I'm mm -hmm. one of the first to like say, I love St. Louis. Yeah. There are hours of my life on YouTube. Yeah. Like putting on for the city. Yeah. Like, yeah. but to say it's exempt from criticism, I feel like is not a true statement. Okay. Um, so that's why I want to open the dialogue sure. about this. No, sure. And I, I, I find it interesting because, you know, you're not from here. Yeah. I'm from here. Yeah. So we have two different perspectives. Sure. But 
that's why I hit you with the DM because I figured this could be a really beneficial no, and insightful conversation. No, I think it needs to be a conversation that needs to be had. But in order to have that conversation, I mean, there needs to be a basis, a, a, a foundation of maturity and a foundation of honesty, right? And I find that a lot of people aren't willing to have an open and honest conversation about where things are because it might put them in a bad light. I went to Creo with a splash of soul, right? I'm sure you've heard about, you know, the blow up over at Creo with a splash of soul. When did, she, and not just the blow up between me, but so much so that her own customers are telling her, ma'am, you're, you're out of pocket. It's mm -hmm. been bad for a while, mm -hmm. right? So how can we grow if your own customers are telling you things and you're, you're, you have a blind eye to what your constituency is telling you, right? So in order to have a conversation about change, we got to start with honesty, right? Absolutely. We got to start with, you know what? And it's okay not to have all the answers. It's mm -hmm. okay not to know what to do. It's fine. Mm -hmm. We're all human. Nobody's asking you to be perfect. But in order to have this conversation about how we grow, we got to have an honest conversation about where we actually are. Right? Yes. And that's, that's, that's a hard conversation to have. It is. It's never easy for criticism to be, I mean, both given and sure. received. Because no, nobody, mean, nobody wants to be browbeat. Nobody wants to be, to be whooped on. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But at what point do we grow from where we are? Are we interested in growing from where we are? I mean, I would love to see St. Louis on the same level as like New York, LA, sure. all these other places. Sure. For sure. Um, and like with this degree that I threw on the ground, it's like, <laughs> you know, being in the art program, half of my like program was being criticized sure. and giving sure. criticism. Yeah. So I guess it really like opened my eyes to like, you know, you have to be honest and real about it because it you'd be doing a disservice not Absolutely. doing so. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it's like you got to have an open mind about it. And I know it's not easy for to receive criticism because like there is like a level of vulnerability with it, too. Well, that's anybody. But I guess the yeah. question, the question still remains, why hasn't St. Louis pushed past where they are? Like, what is I mean, we can talk about all day long what's holding us back. We can talk about where we are. But why haven't we pushed through? What's the barrier that's in our way that's preventing us from pushing through? Right. What is that? And I don't know the answer to that question. I don't even know if I know the answer. You know, I think there's a lot of inward perspective that we need to really look at, you know, just as a city and just like not just in the culinary scene, but just like as a whole. Yeah, I said, I guess I said most industries, they're dependent upon the generation that's coming up. Right. Who's where's the, the food, the culinary industry? Where's the next level of that? Mm -hmm. Well, where's the current level of that in St. Louis? So forget yeah. current level or next level. Where's the current level? And then where's that next level? Absolutely. Yeah. How would well, how would you describe the culinary scene here? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> how would I describe the culinary scene in St. Louis? I'll use one word. I'll just sip my lemonade. I'll use one word. Uh, dreadful. Mm. Dreadful. That's a powerful word. Yeah, and and I'm saying that um, not in a I'm pointing the finger kind of way. I'm saying that because I am infuriated by the culinary scene mm -hmm. here in St. Louis and also saddened at the same time. Right. Okay. So the me being infuriated comes from, you know, you go to a restaurant and you're spending your hard earned money. I should be able to get things that I don't have at home. Right. Mm -hmm. I should be able to get things that are better than what I would have at home. Mm -hmm. Right. You have restaurants who are here in St. Louis serving you canned green beans and canned uh, big beans. Right. I went to uh, a restaurant and they gave us the potato salad. Well, she said, yeah, it comes from a, a store, store bought potato salad. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why do I want that is to bad. go to a restaurant and pay money for a store bought potato salad? Yeah. Right. Um, you go to uh, a place like I went to Elicious mm -hmm. and I ordered. It's not much to order. No, you know what? I'll use Wine Down Cafe as an example. Okay. I went to Wine Down Cafe yesterday and uh, did a run of the menu. It wasn't much to choose from on the menu. Right. So much so that I didn't want the opportunity to go to waste. So I ordered the breakfast burger. Mm -hmm. Right. It's two Krispy Kreme donuts, a beef patty, cheese and one strip of bacon. That was the that was what was pre pre presented to me. There was no um, sauce. There mm. was no condiment. There was no anything special. Mm. And so I'm saying to myself, who's eating this? Who's sitting down? Krispy Kreme donut. That's interesting. Yeah. And it's, it's a thing that's been done before. It's a, it's a fad. But I guess what I'm saying is who's eat, who's sitting down to eat this? 
right? Mm -hmm. Like when you come up with this menu concept and you say, I'm gonna put together two Krispy Kreme patty, uh, uh, donuts, a, a beef patty and some cheese and a slice of bacon, where'd that come from? And why are you presenting that on a menu? Who is eating this, right? So that infuriates because you have these restaurants open that are half serving food. There's nothing, I went to B&I, you know, pork chop sandwich, fried pork chop, two pieces of white toast, lettuce, tomato, sliced onion, that's it, right? I'm like, God, dog, people are eating this? Mm -hmm. So that's the infuriation part. And then what saddens me is that, like I said before, you know, you just don't see the next, you don't even see the current generation providing alternatives better than that right so that's that's kind of i mean i use the yeah. word dreadful but if i need to do a comparative analysis between uh st louis for example and kansas city missouri mm. night and day and factually there are more uh residents in the st louis metro than there are in kansas city metro yep right that's true and for kansas city metro scene from a black perspective to be leaps and bounds ahead of St. Louis. I don't know, Dante. Doesn't really speak volumes. I know one of the, my frustrations, I guess, with St. Louis, just being totally candid, yep. is for a lot of, and I can't really speak as much on the culinary industry, but I know from like the creative standpoint, because mm -hmm. I'm also a freelance videographer full time. That's, that's my job. Yep. So there, the opportunities that are presented here compared to other cities, it draws a lot of people to leave. Hmm. I've heard that. So that's I think that's one of the contributing factors as to maybe why things here aren't as developed yeah. is because a lot of our top talent, they're like, oh, that's an interesting opportunity out in Denver. I'm going to go out there right, right. or like, oh, there's something happening in, you know, Jersey. I think I'm going to pay them a visit. Yeah, but, but doesn't that seem to be problematic that we're able to pinpoint top talent so much that mm -hmm. if they leave and go someplace else, we're at a standstill? Mm -hmm. Right. Doesn't that speak to something bigger, mm -hmm. some sort of systemic issue? The fact that you're telling me that with all the talent that exists, if the top talent, four five, six people leave, then we're in a chokehold. We're at a standstill. I know it's it's problematic. OK. All right. Well, cool, cool, cool. As long as we see that, I'm good. <laughs> but you also mentioned that St. Louis has the most passionate community that you've seen. Yeah. What were the contributing factors to like leading up to that statement? <laughs> like what what led to that? The comments. OK, the comments. I've never seen a city go so hard for what they believe in. Right. Um, which is why I also say, oh, what do we have here? Yeah. What are we having? Uh, fresh squeezed blood orange mimosa. OK, fresh, fresh squeezed squeeze blood orange mimosa. OK, with blood orange on the inside. I'm here for this. OK. It's a mimosa. Fresh squeeze. <laughs> um, yeah, it was the comment section. And I mean, you I had people reaching out to me. Like, this is the third interview I've done <laughs> since I've been in St. Louis. Um, I've had other requests to do interviews, but I didn't want to do those. Uh, <laughs> they were with people I didn't particularly care for. Mm. But um, yeah, I just seen, I saw so many people like in my inbox, in my DMs, in the comment section, mm -hmm. tagging me. I mean, I've been tagged in posts like a th at least a thousand times over the weekend. Oh, wow. At least a thousand posts been tagged in. So reading that stuff, you hear directly from the people who live in St. Louis. And honestly, you have 95% of the people say, he's right. I've been here. It's bad. You know, we are copycat city. I'm just quoting the mm -hmm. things I've read. Yeah, let's we're, say, what are some of the things that you've yeah, seen yeah, kind of repeatedly? Yeah, we're a copycat city. There's no inspiration here. It's dark. Nobody wants change. I mean, I'll give you a real life example. There are two black owned restaurants here, Mandela Soul Food Cafe and Lily Peas Diner. Both on Google said they were open, right? We drove over to both. They both were closed when we got there. Really? So yeah. So it's like, how can you even operate a restaurant or operate a business if when you say you're supposed to be open, you're not even open, right? Mm -hmm. And then they, they said something like, oh, we said we were going to go to catering and open on the weekends only. I mean, that's cool, but nobody knows that. You know what I mean? So it's like, if nobody knows that, what do we do? So this is just, I mean, I'm just, I'm hearing from the people in the comments. I'm hearing from the people who are making their posts. They're all telling me like, these are some of the, some of the ways we feel about What's happening in St. Louis? Okay. So passionate. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Very passionate. Very passionate about what's going on mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. So 
if I were a passionate young talent yeah. that wants to break into the restaurant industry, I guess what kind of insight and advice could you give them? Like for the the viewers that are like kind of like, I wonder what you know what I could really do here. They see an opportunity, kind of like how Joan Rice has done this. Yeah. What would you tell them? Become a social media superstar. Okay. If you are passionate about St. Louis and you're passionate about food, there's no reason you can't take six months, go online and become a social media superstar from St. Louis. Create recipes, create food content, create, build community. There are all these tools that are available. Start with recipes. I think the thing is, this is what people like to do. They, get, they go, I have an idea. I want to go sell my stuff online, right? They start to build a brand online. They last for two weeks. They made no money. They quit and they go someplace else, right? The idea in selling online is not to sell online. Don't appear as though you're selling online. Build the community first. Once the community is built, then you offer a product, yes, right? Absolutely. Then you've got, you've got tons of people ready to buy up. So I would say to anybody who's watching from St. Louis, become that social media superstar first, please. And then once you start generating a level of revenue, you start monetizing, don't go spend that money. Let's use that money to invest into our future. And then you start slowly. You slow down so that you're able to speed up. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's kind of how I walked through, like how I built a freelance career. That's how it works. Not saying I'm a superstar, but it's it's about really taking a step back and analyzing, okay, this is a situation, here's an opportunity, and then also just like making sure that you build, 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 Yeah, build, but you build. just posted that like a year out or something. Yeah. You did something a year ago and you just quit and now yeah. you're looking back a year of being a full-time uh -huh. uh, freelancer. Where you were a year ago is not where you are today. Right. Where you're it's going to be a year from now is not where you were two years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. So understanding the principle of sowing and reaping is super important. Unfortunately, our youth don't get they don't understand that concept. They, there's this microwave mentality that goes, I should blow up immediately. But, well, us mature yeah. folks, we know an overnight success takes at least 10 years. Yeah. Right? So it's like you've got to start doing stuff now to cement yourself in the industry. Uh, digital assets in the industry, investments in the industry, sewing in the industry, so that later on it will reap its benefits. But we don't have anybody wanting to do that. Mm -hmm. I guess in terms of collaboration, um, how would you suggest that some of these people go out to meet other talent? Or like, where are some places that you think these people can go to like just network with other like-minded people? I would say fly solo. Okay. The reason I say that is because God didn't give my vision to you. He didn't give your vision to me. He gave my vision to me, mm -hmm. right? And so sometimes that path is a little bit, it's never linear, right? Mm -hmm. It weaves, it bobs, this, that, and the third. I mean, the fact that we're sitting in this space just, just shows you what's necessary and what's needed. Mm -hmm. So I would probably say, um, you know, there is no, no sort of straight path to get to where you've got to go, but you got to start slow and then you build from there. Okay. So I guess as you wrap up your time here in St. Louis- yep. What do you hope to see happen in this city or what do you hope to see next time you land? Um, it would be nice to see a reversal of what I saw, what I've seen my time here. Has there been like kind of a trend as you've visited over the past eight years? Um, no, well, this is a, interestingly enough. No, this is the first year I'm doing uh, reviews and I have data collected from the actual reviews. Okay. Right before when I visited last time we visited, we came last year. I didn't do reviews. I took my team, went to pa uh, Pappy's Smokehouse. Mm -hmm. We went to, we had emos delivered and we had Chinese food delivered, right? It was just us doing our dinner parties. Mm -hmm. This is the first year I'm coming with a videographer behind me. And now we're, we're having the opportunity to go around and look and, and sort of collect this information. And so um, next time I come or in the future, it would be nice to see more JRs in the fold, more people like him building, more people like him growing and pushing through with a craft, right? So, you know, Dante, I've seen people, some people are just lazy. I've seen that, right? We, we've That's seen it. I would you, agree with you, that, yeah. You, lazy and success don't lay in the same bed together. No, right? they don't. You, you've, gotta, <laughs> you've gotta push that aside, right? You see these restaurants, what restaurant should be closed? You open up at one, you close at seven, right? And you, and you, and you wanna be successful in what you're doing. You open six hours a day. The people who wanna support you are at work. Right. When we get off work, we want to go. Guess what? You're closed. We had an impasse. 
right? So it would be nice to see, and you talk about being on the same level as other cities. Well, guess what? Other cities, when Beyonce concert is over, I can go get something to eat. I can go do an after party. I can go have drinks and craft cocktails. St. Louis, nothing. Well, it looks like we do have something that's brought to us right now. Right. So, okay. So this JR, is walk us through it. It's a face croissant sandwich. Um, it typically has a poached egg on it, but. We Praise God. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we did sous vide pork belly. Um, under the pork belly is a uh, tomato, kind of like salsa. So it's fresh local tomatoes. We actually use um, okra seeds. Mm. Because okra seeds are kind of overlooked. And we like the flavor of them, and it kind of adds a different consistency. See what I'm saying? Who's putting oh, where the camera at? Who's putting <laughs> okra seeds and stuff? Right? Yeah. So okra seeds, uh, some J Rice Five Spice on top, carrot puree, um, and then just a little micro herb salad on top. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Enjoy. It. Thank you. We shall. You see what I'm saying, Dante? Oh, wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. Where else in this city? Do I get okra seeds as an ingredient into an open face croissant sandwich? I have no idea. Exactly. <laughs> Let's taste this. Okay, so how, how do we approach this? So I'm going to go with each individual component. So he dressed okay. the salad. Okay, okay. Which I can appreciate. It's a beautiful vinaigrette. There's some arugula and microgreens, so you get a little pepperiness in there. The sous vide pork belly, we're going to try this because he sous vide it and then roasted it to crisp it. Okay. Mm. So that's beautiful. Some ASMR. Mm. And there's, did you say five spice? I taste star anise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So five spice powder is on the pork belly because I taste that sort of like licorice -y situation, but mm -hmm. sweet and savory. And then I'm going to taste the tomato and I'm going to put the whole thing together. Okay. Tomato's okay. Is there mint in here? Basil? That's mint. That's what I taste. Okay, mint. I would probably leave the mint out, personal uh, preference, and add cilantro. Um, because cilantro is a very different component than mint, but that's just my personal opinion. Tear mm. this a little bit. Carrot puree is beautiful. And it tastes just like carrot. No, you know how some parades could be, you put so much other stuff in it. Then you miss the whole thing. I was like, is, what, is, what is this? It's good, but it misses the mark. Yeah, he put mint. I would leave the mint out, just because you have mint. But you also have the arugula and the dressed um, salad, which could be a lot on the palate. You know, for the uh, the regular people tone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's beautiful. Crisp and clean. I would have toasted, I want a little more texture. On a, I'm going to take this off. My, I'm getting warm. A little more texture on the croissant. Like butter grilled would have been beautiful with this. Yeah. Not just sort of pressed and warmed. But other than that, I don't really have a problem with this. I like it. I like it a lot. So out of five, what would you give it? Um, four and a half out of five. Four and a half. Here we go. I would even take the carrot away. Because I don't think the carrot brings anything to the party. I would get rid of the carrot and do potato. And I would do potato and caramelized onion. Because now that puts me more in the mind of breakfast potato. Not just carrot okay. puree, right? So mm -hmm. think about a composed dish. Carrot puree is part of arbitrary. What are these, rice noodles? Yeah. Oh, so you're going for Asian. Mm -hmm. Kind of, okay, okay. So then I would completely change all of this. I would even do the tomatoes um, cucumber style, mm -hmm. like that cold cucumber salad with the sesame and all that. Yeah. If you're going to go completely for that, I would do that. And I would change this carrot puree. If I'm doing Asian, I don't know, it's tough. It's tough. Because there's not really anything pureed that I could give you. Mm -mm. It's too strong. You already got strong flavors going on. I would pickle the, the tomato. I mean, you can leave the carrot the way it is. It's fine. Mm -hmm. It's just not, where do you see carrots and Asian go together? With this, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I see what you're going for. I would just choose a different schmear. Yeah. It's delicious, but I would just use a different schmear um, and then pickle the tomato. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Personal opinion. Let me just take this off. I, I don't got okay. warm, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Do you have any final closing thoughts for the city? Uh, final closing thoughts for the city. Um, I think my post I put up yesterday mm -hmm. um, that has like, I don't know, 800 shares. <laughs> I think that post sort of sums up my experience, sums up what I felt. Yeah. Um, 
This is honestly, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I go to black owned restaurants all over this country. Every city we go to, we just finished up, I think nine or 10 restaurants in DC, eight or nine restaurants in Baltimore, um, you know, eight or nine restaurants in Richmond. This has been the only city I've come to where there is no upscale dining experience, right? Um, it's also been the city I've come to, the only city I've come to where people have been this passionate with no solution, right? So the, this, this passion is like sort of on the same line as the passion from Baltimore, right? The people in Baltimore go crazy over their city. There's a place I went to, it's called Poppy Cuisine. Half the city loves it, half the city they don't like it, right? Um, they've been, or whatever the case may be, but they're still vocal about it and there's still an option, right? Here, there's no option. So, um, you know, like I said, the, the two ways I'm leaving feeling are both infuriated and sad, but also there is a little bit of hope in there after coming to here today that people like, like JR will blaze a trail that needs to be blazed, needs to be created in a lane that doesn't exist. You know, I said this, this, you know, if I had the time, I would open up four restaurants, upscale restaurants here in St. Louis and make a killing, make a killing. You could be a multimillionaire in 24 months in St. Louis if you brought good food. You hear that? You could be a multimillionaire in 24 months if you brought good food to St. Louis, invested and really honed the craft, because mm -hmm. the city desperately needs it. And if you don't mm -hmm. do it, I probably will. <laughs> <laughs> Give you some money and I'll do it? Yeah, no, nah, you know, I'm just saying, like, there's plenty of opportunity. I'm like, man, I, I, I'll do it. You know, mm -hmm. I'll come here. I'll bring, you know, a quarter of a million dollars to the city, invest it, and flip it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But there's, there's the opportunity, and people are begging for it. I mean, I'm not even talking about people that's on social media. People who come to my dinner parties. Yeah. Are, I'm talking to them firsthand. These are people who live in St. Louis. You know, every time we do a dinner party, we ask, who's done any extensive traveling to get here, right? So you travel. You know, yesterday... 30 people came, one person traveled extensively, mm -hmm. right? So 29 people live in St. Louis and they're telling me to my ear, we don't have this, we don't have that. We're missing this, we're missing that. The, 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 the land is ripe, man. The land is ripe. We just need people who are willing to till the soil and plant the seeds. So there's a lot of potential here in the city of St. Louis. It's on us to really take advantage of that. We can, we can uplift the city, we can do it. But so... Let's talk about your experience here today. Okay. How would you describe, so far, Rated Test Kitchen? Oh, good. Everything's great. Uh, everything, really, if I had to give it a, a rating, it's like a five out of five, right? Because and I, I do two things. One is I look and compare to what's happening in the city, mm -hmm. right? I can't take a dish I had in New York and compare it to what I had here, right? I can't do that uh, because those are apples and oranges. Yeah. I, I also do that as well. So people who are watching me, they know, okay, he went to this in New York. Is it like this? Is it similar to that? What, you know, what can I expect? If he does food like this and he does a little fine tuning, he could be the next Huncho house in Hyattsville, right? Literally could be the next Swahili village in Newark, right? That could be him for St. Louis because again, nobody is doing this. And I can tell he's young, right? Some of the things that he served us, you can say, oh, this is a, a younger chef or somebody who doesn't have a ton of experience. They're on their way though. Who the hell is sous vide pork belly with five spice, right? And it's not greasy, right? Who the hell is doing carrot puree with open face croissant? Nobody, who's putting okra seeds and stuff, you know what I'm saying? But just not carrying it all the way. So what I'm saying, who's doing this? Who's frying rice noodles as a garnish? Nobody's doing that. He is. Yeah. He is. So you keep that up. I mean, the sky is the limit. The sky is the limit. I mean, honestly, this is like, I mean, this could be on the same level as like Michelin star restaurants. You know what I'm saying? Once you get the service together and you get the experience together, you keep making drinks like these and food like that, you'll be all right. <laughs> you'll be good to go. You'll be good. Well, I mean, I greatly appreciate you taking the time to chat with us Absolutely, today man. and go through this experience with me. I mean, this has been a lot of fun and I feel like it's been insightful i've learned a lot yeah i want where, where's my play i want that bacon that pork belly is it gone <laughs> mm. somebody loves mascarpone as much as i do i'm sorry this is not mascarpone. this one is uh lavender honey 
Lavender honey. Lavender honey cream cheese on top. That's Lavender nice. honey cream cheese on top. And then you've got some flor some honey quarantine and then some honeycomb. Oh, that smells great. Yeah, well, I do a little bit of the, the cheese on top. Okay. Beautiful. A little bit of um, this lattice work situation. All right. And then I'm going to... Mm. Is this what is this lavender? Lavender honey that was dehydrated? No, that's just honey Florentine. Honey Florentine. Oh, that's a no, this this little thing here. What's this? Yeah, this is the honey Florentine. That's delicious. Oh yeah. Mmm. <laughs> yeah, this is delicious. Oh yeah, this is this is the incredible. Only, now this is good. This is a five out of five. But to make it a seven out of five, yeah, please give me a shortbread crust on the bottom. Either shortbread or crumble for some texture on the bottom. Buttery texture with this baked on top. Oh my God. I'm telling you, and maybe a little bit of that crumble, because it's just all soft. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So a little bit of that crumble and maybe put some lavender in that crumble right on top, you got a winner, hands down. It's just soft yeah. with no other texture going through. But flavor-wise, honey, that's amazing. That's a winner right here, boy. I'm going to eat all that. What do oh, you think? Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's good. I've been silent. <laughs> <laughs> What's your approach to, to tasting it? Well, I, I did the same thing you did, like, Start small, then go for the whole experience. And yeah, it's it's great. Yeah, and then they did the powdered sugar. Mm -hmm. I like how there's the honeycomb pattern. Yeah, I mean, that's I what like I'm that. saying. There is intentionality here, right? Somebody is taking a step back and said, let's think this thing through and let's see how we present this. And this is, friends, I don't eat the food. Everybody's stuff. This is delicious. I need one more piece to go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how good are you? Oh, amazing. Fantastic job. This is. Beautiful. Nobody else is doing this. Nobody. This is incredible. Creole with a splash of soul? No. Kay's Kitchen? No. Elicious? No. Red's Barbecue? No. Here? That's it. That's it. This is restored my faith in St. Louis. Okay. We love to hear this that. This is restored my faith in St. I Louis. I think that is an excellent note to end on. Yeah, this is restored I my faith in St. Louis. <laughs> so again, thank you so much for joining us for this. Where can people find you online? Darius Cooks. Just you go onto any one of my social media platforms or just Google Darius Cooks. I come right up. I'm Darius Cooks on TikTok, YouTube. Uh, well, I'm not on Twitter. TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. And I'll be sure to link all of all the profiles in the show notes below or the description on YouTube. Y'all know so, who I am. You know how to find yeah. me. Cheers to the future of St. Louis. Here's to the future of St. Louis. That was good. That's a cut. Cut and a wrap.